<laughs> yeah, he gave us the laugh. He gave us the good laugh. I don't know why. I don't know why. Still to this day, right? When I meet uh, Shaquille O'Neal, you know, you name them. They love that they hear that laugh or the or the Rods dance, you know. 45 years later, right? Exactly. That yeah. that's an iconic laugh, man, I tell you. <laughs> like everything you did from your dance to your laugh, you know, to some of the lines you gave. Thank you. Uh, my Thank favorite you. role had to be the one in Martin, where you was oh, on there oh. trying, to be, trying to make somebody your concubine. <laughs> that was hilarious. That's one of my favorites, too. Oh, really? oh, my Lord. A lot of people say that. Prince Uche. Yes. Or, or as Martin is a Prince Uchi. Uchi. Now you know you're gonna have, <laughs> have to give us some Prince Oopsie tonight. We want some Prince Uchi. That is hilarious. Mr. Uh, Thomas, you were a very large part of my childhood. Oh, bless you, darling. Bless you. Yes. Bless you. And we guess what? Sleepy. One of your buddies told me to tell you hello. She called me yesterday, as a matter of fact. Bernadette. Miss Flo. Flo. Anthony. Flo Anthony. Oh, Flo, oh, Flo. Of course. Oh, my she Lord. Said, yes. She said, tell Ernie I said hello. But we go <laughs> way back, way back. Always a sweetheart. Right. Yeah. Always a sweetheart. Yes. 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 I want to welcome everybody in the room. We have the legendary Ernest Thomas here with us. You guys know him as Raj Thomas from What's <laughs> Happening. Give him a major <laughs> shout out. We got we got our people in the room. Welcome, welcome. We got a treat for you, Ernest. We finna play that right now. So oh, everybody okay. stay tuned. Here we go. Here we go. All right. The magnificent Ernest Lee Thomas. Most of you may remember Mr. Thomas from the cult classic What's Happening. One of my favorite shows, by the way. Also, uh, you may remember him from What's Happening Now, the reboot of What's Happening. You may remember him from uh, Everybody Hates Chris. You may even remember him from an episode of The Jeffersons in 1975. He's been in several films as well. One of my personal favorites is Malcolm X. Ernest Lee Thomas, uh, first and foremost, me and my partner want to just thank you for being here let you know how much respect we have for you as being a part of our childhood memories. The number one show on the network in that time and is still playing reruns to this day. One thing I do know about Ernest Lee Thomas, he's very humble. I mean, he has the success, but he remained humble through it all. And he always says, don't allow this fame and fortune to get to you or make you be someone that is arrogant or too high and mighty to, you know, just give back and be kind to others. He never lost sight of that and he's still out here doing his thing. Much love to you, Ernest Thomas. We wanna just show you that love. We appreciate you coming on the show and you're welcome here anytime. Thank you so much. We want you to know we'll never forget your role as Raj on what's happening now. You made an impact on us, whether you know it or not, and we're still tuning into that show. Let's show Ernest Thomas some love. Oh my God. Y'all gonna like make <laughs> Yes. Well, well, that made me a little misty eyed. Thank you so much. I, I never take it for granted, you know, so I, right. I thank God that he put it on your heart to to seek me out and to give me that beautiful tribute. Thank you so much. Yes. It was mainly this one, this one right here, my partner. <laughs> okay. You know, but I agree that, you know, we both should connect with you and, you know, speak with you for your history and for all that you've done Thank in you. the tech industry, Thank you. you know. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's been a beautiful, you know, it's hard to believe it's 45 years ago, you know, mm -hmm. as of August 5th this year, uh, 45 years ago, you know, uh, top 10 show and just the God's faithfulness, you know, because I prayed on that. I prayed to have a show and I wanted it quickly. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> So all the haters, you know, my friends have been acting for years. I was a late bloomer. 
So they've been there since they were, you know, we were in grade school. I started in my 20s. So they went, who in the hell are you? How dare you? Uh, okay. So um, anyway, but John 14, 14 is real. Ask anything in his name, baby. Right. It was just me and God. Nobody believed but me and God, by the way. I had one friend. And his wife hated him, so he could only say it so much because she hated him. She hated my guts, you know. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. She, she's. I had no talent. Yeah. That made you work even harder. That's right. That's right. That's right. But that is so true. Holding on to God's word, you know, that is the keeper to success, Brother. to longevity, to you know, everything, yeah. you know, in the yes. industry. <clears throat> right. So we do have some questions for you. I'm going to let okay. you start with her question, and then I'll ask some questions. We have some fans in the chat who may want to okay. ask a few questions, too. We, okay. Hopefully you'll be able to answer that. Sure. First of all, I'm not Fitty Sense's daddy. Who? The best of, <laughs> there was Which, a rumor for a long time that I was Fitty Sense daddy. <laughs> yeah, seriously. No, I'm not lying. I'm not. I would go to wow. auditions, and they'd ask me, "Come on, it, it, you just embarrassed. You left him, or something like that." I said, "No, I'm not." That went on for a long time. So anyway, <laughs> do we know who came up with that rumor? I we don't know. I don't. I, I had a friend call me even from Gary, and she said, "No, Ernie, I heard." She said she heard it. I think it was some rap. Somebody was in some hip hop. Some you know associated with hip hop right. said it, okay. but I don't know they they must have been joking around or something. But right. people took that and ran with it seriously. Wow. Yeah. I want. I mean, I wish. <laughs> I want his house exactly. I want that house. <laughs> so, partner, you had your question that you wanted to go ahead and ask. Okay. So, <laughs> starting off, uh, Mr. Thomas, I wanted to know. How would you describe your upbringing in Gary, um, Indiana? Oh, you know, I was just telling someone how you can leave your door open and unlocked and how it, you know, it really took a village to raise right. the child. I was in the projects, you know, and, and they had fathers. I was probably the only one that I can remember that didn't have a father. Wow. I, and, and I just thought about that. All my friends had their father there, you know, and uh, the parents could reprimand you. So it wasn't like just your mother. If you right. did something wrong, you know, Miss Hazelette, you know, uh, 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 Miss Miss Viola, anyone can say, you know, Ernest, you know better than that boy. You better get in that house. You know, they can they can reprimand you without your right. mother wanting to fight them. You know, right, right. And so it, it really took you could you go and stay over each other's home. You eat. You might eat dinner at one of the other neighbors' houses. Uh, no violence. No drive by shooting. Uh, it was on Sunday. You can. It's like clockwork. Everybody is going out to church. You see the sisters with their big church hats on, right. you know, and I had my little suit. It was cheap, but I, <laughs> I, had, my, I had my little welfare suit. <laughs> but That's everybody right. was dressed up, you know. It was like Sunday was church day, but I mean, you knew it, you know. And uh, so I don't, I just, you know, look when I look around today, I don't see that. And uh, right. I just remember that part and how much our teachers care and they would slip in that black history with us, you know? Right. Uh, yeah. They would just put that in, you know, cause my, my main teacher, Miss Thomas, and I, they, she's right you now. She was a Delta. She was All a right. Delta Sigma <laughs> Theta. And I didn't know nothing about the Greek, but she would tell us about the Greek alphabet. And I'm like, why are we learning this? You know? <laughs> and, <laughs> And uh -huh. she had that paddle on the wall. Okay. And when you, yeah, so when I played, you know, but I was bullied now. I was, that's the only bad part. Wow. Uh, because if you're smart, um, unfortunately at that time, if you were smart, you got, you know, beat up, you know, the teacher's right. pet, you know? So right. nobody want, they didn't celebrate your intelligence. Right. Uh, they didn't celebrate that I'm talking like the teachers. Instead, I'm trying to be white. Right. But all our teachers are black. I'm just imitating their speech, right? 
Right. So, uh, I, I, unfortunately, among my own, you know, right. from uh, six, from first grade, uh, kindergarten on up to sixth grade, uh, it was just everyday torment, pretty much. You wow. know, you're nappy headed. You look like a monkey. You got nap. Uh, uh, you're ugly. Wow. Your clothes are cheap. You ain't got no daddy. All of that was constant. Then I was a church boy, a church Pentecostal. So you know, you a right. holy roller on right. top of that because people, most people were Baptists and that type, and I and our neighborhood. Yeah. So wow. uh, it was just a constant, like God with this. And thank God, I was so centered in the church, right? And believed wholeheartedly that Jesus is my Savior. God is my Father. Since I don't have a father, right. but God is my Father. My grandmother told me early on, "Don't worry about you not having a daddy. Right. Your father can do the impossible." Exactly. Uh, but it still was like every day you dreaded going to school. So I started playing hooky. And uh, Miss Thomas wouldn't have it, you know. And she told me, I mean, she says, boy, don't you know you can be anything? You know, don't you know there's nothing you can't do? Now, look, I, I, I got to I got to She grabbed that. <laughs> and she would grab me by the by the belt and, and hold and tighten you so your butt would kind of, you know, stick yeah. out. And babe, she went. <laughs> she went. But Boy. I thanked her. I went when I got what's happening. I went back. Wow. You know, thank God before she died, you know, she was, I went back to thank her. Oh, wow. Uh, yes, Miss Thomas, yes. M Mr. Thomas, and, uh, this is really uh, hitting home for me because I'm an educator as well. And it's are just you? sad, <clears throat> I, I guess. It's just so sad that, you know, the experiences that you had so many years ago are still, you know, taking place. That's sad. It's sad. It, it, it really is. Just because... You know, I mean, I mean, you can't get a A on the test or a right. B. On the test, you know, yeah. and then, then now, I, I kind of, in fairness to my bullies, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I learned later. I learned the first time though. The teacher, she said, "Ernest, I'm leaving the classroom now. You take down names of anyone who's oh. talking." <laughs> And I went because God said, "Don't lie." The church says, "Never lie." So I'm, <laughs> I'm writing names. <laughs> Write them names down. Oh, I didn't know. My mother said, "Baby, you can tell a peaceful lie." You know, <laughs> God knows. God don't want you to get beat. You don't have to get people's names. Because <laughs> I was running. Oh, I was running that day. We, <laughs> we, what a memorable story. You know, really. And Totally against bullies. I was bullied. You know, you and I have a lot in common. We were both born in Gary, and we faced them bullies. You know, I had enough of the bullies to where I don't take that from nobody no more today. You know? Right, right, right. But I wanted to ask you, I did some digging, and I learned that you had once met Tupac. Can you tell us about that experience? Wow. Oh my Lord, yes, man. I and, and you know, God, God forgive me, but I, I've asked God for forgiveness because I, I I didn't think well of him because of all the press. You right. know, uh, or he raped somebody and and he beat up someone. And he got this attitude about this and that. So it was <laughs> that uh, it's a hotel in Hollywood that was well known, and a lot of hip hop got it would stay there, and I represented. Uh, a young man, Giovanni James now, who's actually on Warner Brothers and uh, he's in New York, but so I was there with him. Then I, and I saw Tupac in the lobby and he looked over at me and I went, oh Lord, <laughs> you know, I'm like this nigga. <laughs> I, like, I saw, oh, I hope he don't bring his butt over here. And then he starts, oh no, you know, this rapist, you know. <laughs> You know, I'm thinking all the negative stuff. And he got the biggest smile on his face, man. And he's like, like him hypnotized coming towards me. Wow. You know, like he can't believe. Yeah. And he just bear hugged me and said, man, thank you for the laughter. I mean, just held it, you know. Wow. And I felt so bad. I'm thinking, if you only knew <laughs> what I was <laughs> But your mind changed when it did. Your oh, mind it did. Oh, yeah. it did. Oh, my lord, it did. And I and I tell people, and I, I say, I don't care if nobody likes me. Go if 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 Tupac likes me, 
You're good. You are right. I'm good. <laughs> despite the despite the tough exterior, I think inside of him, he was all right. You know what I'm saying? I, I agree with you. I totally mm -hmm. agree. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I I know he had it together up here too. Oh, oh my lord, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I met his uh teacher. Uh, she's a Jewish young lady, and uh, mm -hmm. he gave her a lot of his literature for later on. And oh uh, she actually teaches a lot of young brother look like in the uh, younger years, the grade school, junior, yeah. how to get that message out. And she gave right. him all those books, uh, Machiavelli. She said, "Look, don't be just the average rapper. You know, have knowledge." So she gave right. him all these books, and that's why. You know, and he gives her a lot. And he told her he wouldn't live long, though. He, he did. said, look, take, he yeah. He wow. said he would not live long. And look, listen to me. Listen to me now. Take these, take this. It was like some poetry. Yeah. He's, uh, this is yours, you know, because I'm not going to be here longer, you know, long. He knew he was going to die. He, he said he was going to die young. Oh, man, I hate to hear that. Yeah. I know. I know, right? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> well, um, I wanted to know what sparked your interest in the entertainment industry? What, you know, how did you become interested in the field of acting? Well, you know what? I never wanted to be an actor. I swear, no one believes that. I swear, y'all. I mm -hmm. loved everything about I love I love Lucy, uh, you know, uh, uh, make room for daddy. Y'all might be too young for that, but you know, uh, <laughs> but man's, uh, you know, uh, have gun will travel, gun smoke, oh, yeah. uh, wagon train, uh, all the westerns, uh, but too. definitely all the comedies. But Lucille mm -hmm. Ball was number one, and uh, so I was just a spectator, you know, I was just a fan of everyone, right. you know, right. uh, and, and my friends like Robert Riley. Who still? I think he's he's still in New York working and right. Uh, but uh, I would see him from grade school, junior high, high school, and another brother. I can't think of his name, but they were so they were always in the plays. They could sing and wow. Being Church of God in Christ, we weren't allowed to do any of that anyway, right? You know, because it was it was known to be it was like a secular, right? So, um, so I would just say, how do you guys do it? I said, oh, you're so talented. How do you remember all those, all those lines and all this stuff, right? And uh, so, you know, I'm always that fan. And then I go to college and uh, uh, my frat brother, I'm, I am a Kappa. Uh, okay. but I love all the okay. Greeks. I love all of them. Just saying. Okay. Uh, okay. Excuse me. I got <laughs> my note. I love all the Greeks, but uh, my Kappa brother, Ivory Smith, he had an older brother who was, had been in the Army, and he came there, and uh, he wasn't a person who took to a lot of people, and, and he was um, he was feared, actually, <laughs> because he had that demeanor like, you know, I don't, he don't suffer fools lightly, right. and so, but he took, he just, I think because I didn't have the father and all that, and when he would talk to me, I talked about, you know, how that bothered me. But yet I knew God was the, you know, all the the father, but right. it would nice to, to know who the guy I never saw him. So he kind of took me under his wings. And uh, I noticed anything that I would try to make him laugh. Um, and he just like he, he the more he laughed, the more things I would try. I, I remember particularly I just one day I I I uh put like a t-shirt, like it's like hair, right? And then I, I put a pillow inside the t-shirt I was wearing like I was pregnant. And uh -huh. I was just sad. That, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was sad my man had left me. Uh -huh. So he, he, was, he was just so, it just anything, anything uh -huh. to make him laugh. And that's when he said, after so much, so much of that, that he said, Ernie, you're an actor, man. He's earned, I swear, you can do whatever those actors do on TV or in the movies. I'm like, huh? oh, no, what are you talking about? No, I'm just being silly. And he said, no, no, man, you should at least take an acting class. I, I'm, I'm serious. I, wow. that, I, God put that in him 
I didn't know what the hell he was talking about. That was so foreign, so far removed. Right. And uh, so I did take the class. You know, I took the class, uh, and I the the teacher was a redhead. I remember that a tall white guy with red hair, right. all acting students in there. And um, so uh, at the final the final test, you had to do various monologues. I did one from Hamlet and. Julius Caesar, and I think I did the Gettysburg Address, you know, wow. and I, well, I, I thought, cause I was trying to be real, I took the sheet from the, from the dormitory room, because I'm trying to dress like Caesar and the Roman, <laughs> they yeah. laughed, they were laughing. I remember that outfit. <laughs> I remember. They were laughing at me, because I come on, I come on stage, you know, with the sheet on, and, but when I started speaking, everybody got quiet. Yeah. So he, I don't even know I got the talent. You oh, know, I'm just trying to be as real. I have real no idea mm-hmm. what they got. And then the teacher, he said, he said, can I talk to you? And uh, he says, I just want you to know you can do this for a living. Wow. I said, oh, no, no, I'm going to be a social worker. And, and that's what I was determined to be because we had the best social worker. Uh, she was a missionary. So her name was Missionary Taylor, who right. also was Church of God in Christ. That's how she introduced me to it because my folks are all Baptists. So I was the only Kojic. And so I said, I want to be a social worker, and that's all it's going to be. But thank you anyway. And right, right. Then I auditioned for, uh, there was a play, Romeo and Juliet. And mm-hmm. so I, um, Jake said you should audition for it, you know. Again, I'm the only non-acting. I'm coming to the audition. I had seen the movie, so all I did was try to imitate what I saw the guy do there. It was the prince, Prince Aeschylus. But I love the fact that he was a prince. He commanded authority. He's trying to keep the peace. So I, uh, when I did my thing, I just jumped on stage and tried to basically doing my version of him. And uh, they said that the the everyone said, "Oh, you won't get it because the uh, director he's he's racist." They said, "So he don't he not gonna hire black." But so he ain't you know you can go, but you won't get it anyway. Even if you weren't were talented. So he was so going I hate. Just, yeah, he was. A, so I go up there and do it, and the, this guy they said was racist, right? He says to the other people auditioning, he said, "I don't know about you." But I like to hear that one more time. Wow! And then you, but I'm still like, okay. I, and I do it, and I get the parole. And we travel to all the various high schools in Indiana. I did my first autograph <laughs> signing, you know. Yeah. Uh, but still, like, this is just, you know, a passing thing. No big. I'm still going to be a social worker, and right. So um, I just I graduated with my. Uh, a degree in sociology and psychology, and then I decided to uh, uh, work, uh, uh, get a degree in student personnel. So I, I worked, started my master's. I had one year uh, on my master's, and uh, but it kept that acting thing was there. But I went, you know, it's like it's like it won't go away, you know. And I went, this is crazy, God. I know this is just, this is not real. Uh, nobody gonna want, me. my mother, everyone want, I'm, you know, they, uh, I gotta provide money. I, I can't, right. I gotta, I gotta get a job, you know? So then Jake says, um, there are, they have uh, the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, which is the oldest English speaking acting school in the world. And it, you know, Robert Redford, you name all the greats. Uh, wow. You know, I mean, the other school that had them, but that was the first school. You may, Spencer Tracy, you name it. You know, it's like a who's who. And uh, so Jake believed that I could get accepted. He drives me to, they, they're coming to Chicago at the LaSalle Hotel in Chicago. And the executive director and Jake threatens me. He thre- threatens to kick my butt <laughs> if I don't. I get all the way there, did I get cold feet? Right. Oh. And uh, and I said, Jake, I can't. Did you see the list of people that went to this? Robert Redford, so and so. I said, I can't. He said, Ernie, get your ass up there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and remember, Jake is feared. And he looked, you know, we can look like everybody. We can look Asian. We can look, he looked like he was Chinese and black, you know, because he had Indian in him, right? Right. 
and he gave me that look. And and he now then he went he got a six pack of Schlitz malt liquor. Yeah. He said, "So get your ass up in there, and when you come down, we're gonna celebrate." <laughs> so I go with fear and trepidation. Go up there. I do the same thing I did for the class. Wow. Those monologues. The guy says, "Welcome to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts." Now, like, oh God, what is going on here? You know. <laughs> wow. So. From there, I I can't tell nobody. I don't want to tell no one. Can I get a good job? Right. Not as, as a social worker. I get a job at, at the Midwest Steel Mill, uh, the only black ever in that position of human relations. Wow. But my my goal, they don't know. I'm I'm just working there to get a uh, six months of checks so I can afford the acting school. Right. But nobody knows that. My mother don't know it. My frat brothers. Everybody's like, oh, the first black in that position. And right. I had to resign. I had to leave. And er that's when everybody knew and thought that I had lost my oh. mind. And, and understandably, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they thought I'm going to go back to school. Right. right. I'm going to start going start all over. And from there, that's that's, you know, from there, I got wow. two years at American Academy, did Broadway, uh, Hal Prince, you know, who's the king producer of Broadway, you know, Phantom of the Opera, West Side Story. When you get an endorsement like that, and he wrote right. me a letter, said, Ernie, you are, uh, he's, he says that you're an, you're an incredible actor. Uh, I wish I kept that letter, man, but right. he wrote me such a beautiful letter. Then Tony Perkins, who did Psycho, you know, and that film still is out, but he was, okay. he was directing, so I got in a film, uh, play that he directed, I got the lead. And Lawrence Hilton Jacobs had done Cooley High and Claudine. So I saw him. I went, oh, man. I, man, you are so mad. I know you're going to get this part. He's a little man. Don't tell. Don't say that. He said, you do your thing, young man, like that, right? So I thank him. Even to this day, I always tell him, I love Lawrence Hilton Jacobs because he could have had attitude and ego. And right. I got the role. And wow. I got to know. Then I got like Bravo standing ovations. That's why Nick, my uh, someone nicknamed me the Bravo Kid. That was a hater though, but I took <laughs> it. Man. Okay, I made it positive because every night that performance we was in Falmouth, Massachusetts. I mean, the crowd just erupted, you know. And they were writing in the the uh, reviews. He's like a Black Panther prowling this the stage, devouring everyone. I mean, all this, you know, uh, and it's so it was, it was like a dream come true. Yet I'm thinking, Lord, what is it? so? Um, again, everybody's upset with me because my mother and my grandmother don't understand theater. Right. So I said, hey, uh, when I uh, got with Hal Prince uh, and Glenn Close was in this, the the great Glenn Close was a member of the wedding, right? Uh, that I did, and so I was so happy. Helen Hayes Theater. I called my mother. Up, and I'm trying to explain. I said, Mom, I'm on Broadway. She said, Broadway, what's your girl? I'll come and pick you up. <laughs> so I said, no, no, Mom. Not, no, yeah. like, you you know, like, you know, like at church, you got the pulpit, but this is like a stage, and yeah. they don't understand none of that. That's so uh, that was disappointing because I couldn't celebrate it with them, right? right. And then my grandmother got on the phone and she said, well, when are you going to be on TV, baby? You like that. That's all she knew. The grandma and mom never watched anything, but my grandmother liked Tom Jones. So I think she had a little crush on Tom Jones. Okay. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. <laughs> so then that, from that, uh, from there, uh, then it was this, um, I had four deaths in a row. My and my my god sister, I had an uncle, I had a cousin, and my grandmother all died like one rapid. Mm. And so every Ernie, you want to talk? You you want to talk it out, man? And you know you need a hug and all that. So, no, God got to have something special for me. But I'm trying to figure out why am I going through this, right? And so I'm not saying I heard a voice. But in my spirit, I felt I needed to do something bold. So I remember grandma said, when are you going to be on TV? And so I said, I'm going to go to California. I ain't got nowhere to stay. I ain't got no agent. I had the nerve, the audacity, to take a red eye. Because I said, 
I don't want nothing to return to. Ain't no return. You know, ain't nothing to fall back on. So every again, people thought literally. I'm again. He's losing his mind. You got Broadway going. You're doing great here. Now you're gonna go where you don't have nowhere to stay. You know, no agent, and you think you're gonna get a TV show. But John fourteen fourteen. I bought into that. I totally wow. believe. Ask anything in my name, and I said on the plane, Lord. If you give me a show, Lord, I will give you the glory, Lord. But I want the lead, Lord. I want the lead in the show, Lord. I want it to be a positive road, Lord. And I will always give you the glory. I had no idea it beyond it would be beyond all my imagination, all my expectations, right? Uh, wow. Because the people that I admired, all of a sudden, uh, Dr. Maya Angelou uh, and uh, Cicely Tyson, uh, Muhammad Ali, you know, Burt Reynolds, George C. Scott, Lucille Ball, everybody giving me praise, right? Right. It was just an out-of-body experience. And uh, I, uh, the only downside of that, it was like, this is so heavenly, Lord. It must mean something bad is going to happen. And I want to tell everyone out there, when God blesses you, like you're like, oh God, this is too good to be true. Too good to be you true. You gave me everything. You got to receive it. And That's and right. I was at that. I just for some reason this crazy thought was that I was gonna die any minute. You know, any minute now because I had the top ten show. Everybody, all these people I admired was loving me and all that. So mm -hmm. life is too good. Right. I, I wow. it got to mean I'm gonna die at any minute. So I'm thinking any minute I'm going to drop dead, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And then they had, uh, Mayor Hatcher had the Ernest Thomas Day, June 9th, and Coretta Scott King was there. Oh, wow. Uh, Jesse Jackson was there. Um, Dick Gregory was there. Uh, and I can't, uh, oh, God, the other brother was there. I can't think of his name. But, uh, but people didn't care about none of them, and I love them. But everybody was Raj fever. I had no idea. Now I really think I'm going to die because I'm in this parade and I'm waving and people are just, they have to keep the crowds back. I mean, people are going crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just waving everybody. I said, okay, I know, Lord, the bullet is coming any moment now. I know the bullet is coming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said, Lord, but it's been good. Thank you, Lord, because you did, you gave me everything I asked for. <laughs> The bullet, the bullet is coming, you know? <laughs> and I'm looking around. I have all, I'm, they don't know. I'm smiling, but thinking, okay, I just want it to be real quick though. I just want, I just want oh, the bullet hit. Let me just go. I don't want to suffer, Lord. Don't let you me suffer. <laughs> and this is true. Now, honest, honest God, truth. And, um, but, uh, and then when Mary Hatcher tried to introduce me, we fought at the end of the parade. Uh, they had the stage there, and he was going to introduce me. He couldn't do it. They bum rushed the stage where the the police had to come in and try to pull people off. Uh, touch my baby. Oh, here's my here's my here's my daughter. Here's my son. Okay, just touch my hand. And I'm, and, and now I'm like, okay, somebody got a gun. Somebody here, right? So now <laughs> it's going to happen. Wrong. So someone gonna, they going they going to stab me with a knife, or someone got. <laughs> Man, you was thinking all the wrong thoughts. All the wrong stuff. All that wasted time, right? He had you. He had you. He had you. The most humble people, humblest people, you know, such as yourself, sometimes we doubt ourselves. You yes, know? brother. Yes. The day he got us, you know what I'm saying? He got us. And you got to receive that he is, that God is too good to be true. That's why he's God. That's right. That's a miracle. Like, oh, how did this happen? That's what. That's the whole point of it, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, you started to doubt yourself in the beginning, but God started putting those people, those little nuggets in your ear, like, no, you're gonna do it. You can do this. Yes. And you would. You listen. You then you yes. out on right. faith, and you yes. went, you went to California. And yes. Thing and. There's the yeah. rest, you know? Yes, yes, yes. And the devil said, let me mess with him. He got all this. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell him he's going to die. I'm going to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> so I tell young people, I said, look, now, when you get this, just receive it. 
Right. Just receive it and love it. The, all the people you admire, they're going to be admiring you. Just receive it. Like, how can this be? It just is. Because God right. is God. You know, That's there's right. nothing impossible for him. So just roll with it. Swim in it, you know? Yes. Right. We have one question in the chat from Be Sugar 100. She says, do you still keep in contact with your co-host on the show of what's happening? Do you still keep yeah, well, you know, there's only three of us now. Um, yeah. And I do miss them. You know, Fred Berry, Rerun died. Uh, Shirley died. Uh, Mabel King uh, died as well. And uh, Thalmus Rasulullah, who was my father, he also passed. Right. So it's only uh, Daniel Spencer, who was D, and uh, Haywood Nelson, who was Dwayne. And yeah, we, we're very close. Uh, but they're in, she's a, Danielle's a veterinarian, you know, very, she was always straight A's. And so she's in uh, Virginia uh, and Haywood is in New York. You know, he's another genius. He can, he flies planes. He got a pilot's license. Wow. Uh, he's an engineer, uh, great with words. Like if you need a letter, you know, a persuasive letter that makes someone, he, he's got that, that gift. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh wow. Yeah, they were the smartest. I'm telling they were they were they were little geniuses, honestly. And they loved me like the big brother. And I, you know, I appreciate it more now. At that time, I kind of like it was annoying, you know, because hey y'all, look, we do a show together. Y'all ain't got to come home with me. Okay. You right. ain't got to come home. You got a daddy, you got a mama. Right. I, I have my own life. You got you. they wouldn't have it, especially Danielle. You wow. Know? Uh no, no. You know, I was the brother. She could not to her it was all the same. And to the point, Shirley Hemphill finally told me, She said, what is wrong with you, fool? They love you. <laughs> what is wrong? They love and I didn't get it because you know, I you know, your friends are usually your age. So That's now I got these little people. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> and Danielle, and they would come over to my house and get in the pool and uh right. they just admired me looked up to me and uh uh and they when they got started dating uh danielle would want me to meet the boyfriend what did i think hey would want me to meet the girlfriend wow and you know i mean even though they had their parents but they wanted my approval so uh That's even great. when they got married same thing they want you know before they got married i had to meet that prospective husband or bride. And, uh, you know, now I really, I just, I said, Lord, you know, it took me a long time to get it, but they really, I was their brother. That's all it. I was their big brother. Wow. Yeah. That's nope. great to hear actually, yeah. because, you know, the, the shows that come, you know, that have come out and they talk about what was actually going on behind all these television shows. And we found out all, you know, the nefarious things that were taking place and the cast members hated each other. So that's yeah. actually refreshing to hear. Yes, yes. I mean, we had, like any family, we had our disagreements, but we never hated each other. Right. And we always ask forgiveness, you right. know? Cause you know, right. we, you know, you might, you know, cause our egos get in the way. You don't want to say you're sorry at the time. And then later right. on, you know, uh, and Fred Berry, I remember before he passed away, right. uh, he he was said Ernie, Ernie Byrne. I don't know why he called me Ernie Byrne. Don't ask me. I don't know why. He I was Ernie Byrne. Ernie <laughs> Byrne. You know, you know, I just want to apologize for this and I did this. I did that. So uh, we we were like family. I mean, day one, you knew that God had his hand on that show because wow. uh on day one, when I walked into that room and saw all of them. There was a spirit. You cannot explain it. Like it was a reunion. Right. I had never met these people. Yeah. Right. And when I got in that room, I felt like we were together. We had always been together. Wow. And when I touched their hands, it was like electricity. I mean, like a chill. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it was. Uh, only God can make that happen because you can That's get right. a show full of stars. You see a movie with superstars and it, and it fails. Because the chemistry ain't there. That's right. You know, we God gave us that. Wow. You know, yeah. And look at how you've impacted, you know, the world 
I mean, and it's 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 still in syndication, you know. Yes. So you're, yes. Uh, again, yes. you you were role models. For Thank Rod. you. And you Thank being you. the older brother, of course, you know we looked up to Raj, you know. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And that <laughs> laugh, we that you, uh, you know, uh -huh, everyone knows that. Laugh. <laughs> right. Uh, all around the world. And the dance, the dance. I can't. Yeah, dance, dance, right. Dance, 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 right. But. <laughs> Yeah, I got, you know, I got to, at seventy two. I got to be gentle with it, right? So, I don't want to crack, crack. No, we, no, that's not what we. Don't do. crack nothing. Right <laughs> now, all your roles. Think back to the very beginning. What is your absolute favorite role that you ever played? I mean, it could be a television show, movie. What was your absolute favorite? Well, you know, I I get that question all the time, and it, it's when you think of. Uh, the iconic that the Raj that people just fell in love with as as their big brother and right. and favorite son and friend and and uh, a lot of people went to school and got their degrees. I've heard doctors said they because I was you know the valedictorian of my class and I spoke the way I spoke all that. Like Chris Rock said um, that uh, watching me. Uh, and I, he's on my book. You'll see that quote uh, watching me made him believe anything was possible wow. because I was the first black nerd. You know, I, I you know, I didn't always get the girl. You know, I, I wasn't cool. And so he felt that connection with me that he couldn't with the other, you know, with other right. uh, characters. So uh, and then Terry Crews, you know, what he says about me, that the, the, his admiration, you know, uh, right. Christoph St. John, the late Christoph St. John, God bless him, you know. Right. Uh, Rob Zombie, you know, uh, the musician and and the horror, you know, horror director. And uh, he said that, uh, I asked him for a quote, and he says that he, he remembered the Doobie Brothers episode. Right? Yes. So uh, he said, um, he said, Ernest Thomas, he said, his quote was, Ernest Thomas is, is a scene stealer. You know, you can put him in any play or movie. I don't care who they, who's in that, who the, who's in it. All eyes are gonna be on him. And I went, oh God, all eyes are to me. You know, I went, oh no, I got to live up. To that. So then you look at uh, Malcolm X. That was so hard to get because Spike didn't want me initially, and I had to really, you know, three callbacks and all that. And I still didn't think I was gonna get it, but then I got it and. Right. And, and I love Sidney X, you know, I love him, you know, and I, and then Mr. Omar, uh, that Chris Rock chose me, Chris Rock and Ali Leroy uh, created that role for me. Right. I didn't have to audition for it. That's intimidating. Now you got to create, some, they have never seen you do this part, but we, here it is, and you got to make something out of it. And I just said, Lord Jesus, thank you for the gift. You know, and I went for it, and then Miss Omar appeared. Right. You know, I just said, I said, Lord Jesus, you know, and uh, so I think about the millennials, don't know about what's happening, but they see me, and man, they go crazy they go right. not over Mr. Omar. Tragic, tragic. They want to hear that all day long, all, all night long. They want to film you doing it, right? And uh, so, uh, because of Chris Rock, because of Mr. Omar, yeah. I'm, I'm all over the world. So I get fan mail from Switzerland, England, France, Germany, Hong Kong, Brazil. Wow. Um, and that, so that's a whole nother thing. Now, who knew, right? right. right. So you got the, uh, uh, the baby boomers, you know, what's happening. Right. And then you got the millennials with Mr. Omar. So he has blessed me. Tremendously, right. so it's 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 um it's it's hard to you know. Then I've done some uh, stage plays that I wish you guys could have seen because I you know God you know again you know that right. we sell out Don B Walsh uh, and Brandy Burks. They are two playwrights. I did a lot of for a lot of, more, more for Don Don B Walsh and and he is he and Will Smith. And Jada are his benefactors, right? And uh, he he would produce plays at the Wilshire E. Bell Theater, right? And um, so uh, you know, just to see the audience 
they talk to you, you know, black folks. Yeah, yeah. Rod. Oh, he sounds just <laughs> like us. Oh, we love. <laughs> so you know, uh, so and and that's I tell you, it's nothing like that. You ain't no, you you ain't got nothing to, to save you on stage. No. You know, if you if you don't know you're lying, you know. But I I go over it. You know, I I ain't no, I go over like fifty to a hundred times because I don't want to get embarrassed. <laughs> you got to so, save yourself. That's, that's right. Yeah, you know. And that's I just right. did um, uh, five movies. Um, and, you know, uh, I just had a head-on collision, by the way, too. That I uh, thank God I survived the head-on wow, collision. Sorry to hear that. And uh, I'm 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 on a pain bill right now. Oh no! <laughs> I'm on a pain bill right now because it was uh, it was not only physically painful but psychologically. Right. Where I just could not. I started getting depression and anxiety and. Yeah, I, I, you know, I was never, I would never think to see a therapist, but I, I, I went. The doctor suggested, right? Because I said, no, I don't want to ever drive again, and you know, oh, yeah. I, I, this depression is coming out of nowhere, just arbitrarily, you know. Wow. Yeah. And I'm like, how do people deal with this who are bipolar? You know, right. I this, and so, um, so that that has been, so through having to do these five movies because I was committed to them. Um, I, God is, God is amazing. Again, it's just right. ama but those five roles. And I would, again, I go all in, you know, right. I, I study that character from beginning to, I mean, every part of him, I go over and over and you, the more you go over it, you find things. And each time it takes so much out of me. Right. Yeah. And they like to give me a lot of lines. I'm like, I am 72 years old. I don't know why y'all think I want all these damn monologues. Okay? That's but, all right. But God would get made me. And you know what? I have to say those five roles. I am so grateful. And I always say, Lord Jesus, thank you for the gift. And I jump on in and without fail. It ain't about what you did in rehearsal. Right. That's Once you said, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the gift. That other thing comes. Yeah. Right. He comes. You don't do what you did in rehearsal. Right. You know, there's a knowingness that only he could give you. Right. Mm -hmm. And you find yourself almost being out of your body. You can't help the character. He is because Lord, I want to surrender to the truth of this character, Lord. Right. And it just gives you it's a high that is better than any sex, any drink, any drug. Right. That high that you get from that. So I, I did five roles. And um, the last one was a pastor, uh, Tammy Mack. Uh, Tammy Mack is a well-known. She has a show on Fox Soul. And um, yeah. she also she works with Stevie Wonder, KJLH. She has her own show there. And she wrote her first movie. And it is incredible. And doing this pastor, I had no idea. Because I said, Lord, I'm going to give up acting after this. I'm tired of it. Uh, I just want to get this role over with. And when I went down there in Houston, Texas and did this part, Pastor Joseph, I'm telling you, something got a hold of me. That part, it, and she kept pushing me more and more. And it was a it was a chill, a high. You just knew that God was there. So I was reborn again in the acting because I now I felt like. Oh, I want to do a, I want to do a sitcom. Okay? I want to do a, you know, I got to do. And so yeah. I said, God, what is going on now? I said I was done with this acting. All right. <laughs> so you, you had know, kind of lost your desire there for a minute, but yeah, it rebooted. It rebooted. It wow. rebooted. After that, that, that role, it rebooted. I'm telling you, I was on fire, you know? And uh, so now I said, and I feel like God is going to bring me another. Yeah. Right. And coincidentally, so, I was reading somewhere your favorite episode of uh, What's Happening was the Doobie Brothers. Um, oh. That's, and I was like, oh my God, that's like my all time favorite. And my, your oh favorite, my, Lord. my favorite acting role, so far as movies are concerned, was Malcolm X. Oh, oh thank you. You played that role. You know you did. Thank you. Yes. Thank you yes. so much. Thank you. Yeah. The, the Doobie Brothers are really good guys, too. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. We have a lot of your fans in the chat uh wishing you well, saying you look great and you know oh, showing love you. for you. 
we have an interesting question from Prince Daniel. Very, uh, he says, if there ever was uh, Everybody Hates Chris reboot, could could we expect to see more of Mr. Omar? You know what? I pray, you know, they are doing, and I had prayed on it. Um, I was trying to do Mr. Omar animated. I was trying to get them to do my. <laughs> Mr. Omar said, look, it's about, it's all about me, you know? But uh, the next thing I heard, they're doing an animated version of of Everybody Hates Chris. I mean, that's actually, in right. the, it was in the Hollywood Reporter and, and, and Deadline News. And so I don't know, you know, I, I know that people, you know, associate me with the role. I pray that they do. I would love to be a part of it. Yeah, I, I, I would love, you know, I want Mr. Omar to have his own show. And there was talk of that. Uh, yeah. Then they, they didn't do it. But um, uh, but now they have an animated version. So yeah, uh, I know Chris Rock's uh, right-hand guy and uh, one of the producers. And he said, look, I'm going to put a word in. And then I said, you know, Lord, let me just trust in you and however it goes. You know, I pray that they do use me, but I don't know. You know, they might try to use a bigger name. You yeah. know how to, you know, I don't yeah. know, whatever. And I said, I still wish them well, you know, right? because I know, again, if that's not it, then God got something even greater for me. That's right. You know? But I still wish them all the best. So I said, I even told them, I said, man, don't even worry about asking Chris about it. God told me to let that go because right. I'm giving it too much. I'm giving it too much, right? Mm -hmm. So if it happens, I would love for it to happen because what's mine, you can't take it from me. What is yours is no way, whatever, is no way I can take your blessing or your blessing, right? Do it. So that's, I had to let it go. That's but I would love to, re yeah, do Miss Omar again. Awesome. Question. You have a question? Fine. No, you go ahead, partner. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I just wanted to know. And this is something I love to ask people because, you know, when you're in your 20s, of course, you know everything. If you... <laughs> what you trying you know, to you say? Just, you know everything. <laughs> what you trying to say? I think, I think that was a little shade. Little shade. <laughs> hey, all of us, unfortunately, have been through that. If you could go back, let's say to 1976, what are three things that you would tell your younger self? So if you could go back, because yes. I know that's 75, 76, that's kind yes. of when you're getting started. What are three things you would tell your younger self? Oh, that's a great, that's a great uh, question. Um, one I know is um, to not worry, you know, that the worry, I tell people, I tell the young people when I do the talk, that's it. You don't know how much time I wasted, you know, because I got there, of course, again, you know, because you're still human, even That's though you believe John 14, 14, right. you are in a foreign, I've never been to California, you know, I could have been killed, I'm by myself, nobody believes in it but me and Jesus Christ, That's right? right. Uh, so I have all these, I'm just alone. My mother thought I was voodoo, that someone got <laughs> some type of spell on me. <laughs> The Church of God in Christ, I'm going to hell, right? So at that time, now they've changed. But at that time, Denise Williams, also, she was going to hell because she was also called Dick. Her, her grandfather was my pastor. So, so you, it's all that worry, and it bothered mm -hmm. me that the church said that. It bothered me that my mother felt that. It bothered me that my frat brothers uh, didn't believe in me. People joked, I, I was, you know, thinking that I had lost my mind again. Here I am, and, and, uh, and I'm staying on somebody's couch here, somebody's floor over here. Wow. I'm just going to this agent trying to, I'm rejected, rejected, rejected. Mm. And you go back to this little dingy, it was a, a hotel there, it's like $35 a week. So it, it was, and it, 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 it felt like $35 a week too, <laughs> by the way. Okay. It, it felt, you could feel the bed springs, you know, all that. And, uh, and I, I remember being in there at night because I would put on my face during the daytime. And uh -huh. they like, look at that fool. Hey, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, you still going to get that show? I said, yes, I am. <laughs> and everybody like, ha, ha, ha. They all laughing, right? And I said, yeah, God told me I'm going to get it. And they just laugh. And I'll just put the, put the, because God said, act as though it is. Right. So I would always do that. But when I got back after rejection that day, 
This agent don't want you. That one don't want you. I get back in that room in the dark, you know, in the wee hours of the morning, baby. Yeah. And I'm crying a river of tears. Oh, yeah. Like, God, what have I done? What a, I am here by myself. Nobody believes this but you, oh, you know, wow. but he don't tell me to go home. And I tell, I say, y'all have no idea the despair, you know, that the pain of despair, the depth of despair, mm -hmm. when you have nobody believes it, but you and Jesus. All right. Indeed. And I cry myself to sleep. Oh, wow. So I would tell my younger self, God got it. He said, ask anything in my, in my name. He said, don't worry. Don't worry at all. All right. right. So I, what did I do? I work. So that was one thing. And, uh, I'm trying to think of another thing would be probably uh, the fear of death, yeah. you know, because, but and now it was a good part of it was the fear of death made me work harder because mm -hmm. I, I went and I tell young people, you should work at every day. If you want success, work at it like it's your last day. Like every day is your last day. I wouldn't have been here. I wouldn't have made it without, yeah, John 14, 14, but I believe if I don't do this, I'm going to die. So yeah. I got I'm gonna die young, anyways. I got to do this real quick. So I was I was relentless. No staying in bed, no day. You know. Yeah. So I got up, whether I felt like it or not. I got up and I would shower, crying, put that suit on, that same suit. I had about three of them. So <laughs> it was variations of that with a different shirt, <laughs> and I would put on that. You know, put that face on. But that fear of dying. That God is God is too good to be true, and that's why He's God. But that's that's the beauty of it. It's it, the miracles of God, and so uh, receive that. You know, don't fear. Yeah, I mean, know that work at it every day like it's your last. But don't don't fear that God is going to take it. He's going to do something. He's going to let something bad happen. So that's another one. Right. And I probably when I think about it now, because I would not work, I felt that I couldn't get a job. So I, I I would ask somebody different, you know, can I get five dollars here? I was call my, my mother for so, you know, my, you know, Jake. I would ask Jake, uh, Jake, I need a, you know fifty dollars here, mm -hmm. and um, so and then from from the uh, acting from doing the stage stuff, I had some a little unemployment coming, right? You know, by even by there about two a couple hundred dollars, whatever. So that was something. So I would get now I would tell my young self, get a job as a waiter. And that's that's why I tell my proteges. Because as a waiter, you're uh and make sure as a restaurant that all the celebrities and producers Go to. right the powers that be come in that's and make sure you look good, smell good, put your best cologne on, right? Pray before you go in to work. Because now you don't know who you're serving. And then it's an acting class because you got all these different characters, right? So we are, you know, we're empath. You know, I'm a, I'm a real, I mean, I feel everybody. I feel everybody's pain to the point that I thought I was dying once. And it was just that I had done too much of going around yeah. and, and, and telling young mothers, uh, you lost your child to gang violence. And I didn't realize mm -hmm. that I was taking too much in. But, um, mm -hmm. Uh, through it all, you got to, you know, it's, it, uh, uh, I, um, I, I lost my thought. Please, please forgive me. 72. No, that's, me, that's, that's fine. Totally fine. That's fine. All right, so one more last question for you. I was snuggling over some stuff and I read that you were interested in having a stage play about your life. Is that true? That's absolutely true. Yes. Based on my autobiography uh, from Raj to Riches, which do I have a copy of? I don't have a copy. I thought I had a copy. Um, now I don't have a copy. Of it. Okay. But it, yeah, based on the uh, autobiography, I wanted a musical. Uh, okay. Because, you know, church was such a, the church and music, you know, the whole, from the church music to Aretha Franklin and Motown. And so it'd be all that, definitely a soundtrack of your life. Um, and I, I just see it. I feel it and see it. And uh, uh, I'm right now I'm my manager and I are working on a documentary about it. Um, and my man, I have a great manager, Casey Caldwell. He's also uh, works with, uh, 
athletes as well, but he's right. incredible. So, but I would really, I can see that stage for me because it's such, Raj, because Raj, it's from Raj to Riches, but you got all the life behind that, you know, all that church, all that church, yeah, all the stuff he went through, bullying and all that stuff in high school and the whole, the, you know, the, uh, uh, going to college for sit five years of college, you know, uh, and then uh, then Hollywood itself, you know. I would I even have uh, I met a young brother. I did a play with, uh, did a movie with in um, uh, in Arizona. His, his name is Sir White S I R. That's his birth name. But I know, right? S I R uh, Sir. And he he showed he sent me a video of him doing Ali, and I wanted Muhammad Muhammad Ali was my benefactor. I don't know if y'all, but he was a he was my friend. He saved my life during the time when I was really out there and had, you know, after the show was had ended and I was, you know, I gave away all the money. Ali, I met him and he just took me on his wing. So I have this young brother who is perfect for the role of Ali. I met another young brother, David Green, in that same movie called One Hour. Um, Bishop John Wynn, this he's an incredible bishop, a bishop, man of God, but he's also a filmmaker. And uh, so this, he would play Jake. This guy would play Jake. So, but that musical, I see that musical, I see one scene I see is my mother, because my mother, uh, they were saying she would not live. She went eight years ago, she was in a coma, had the pneumonia, the doctor's telling me that she would, you know, that, uh, Mr. Thomas, we don't expect any good news. And I said to them, and you know, how doctors, you know, they're very clinical and they believe right. in education, but they were not talking God. So they were just these four specialists. We don't know, you know, brother, we're trying to find out what it is, why she's in there. We don't know what it is that she's uh, like this. But, and I said, uh, doctors, I respect your intelligence and your skills, but I believe in the supernatural power of Jesus Christ. I've seen healing, divine healing. We didn't have no one from the news coming. We didn't. We didn't start telling everybody about it. We weren't trying to raise an offering about it. I've seen people broke down and 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 suffering, and hands laid on them, and they jumping and shout. So my mother will walk out of here. And she did. It took six months, but mom walked out of there. And all they could say was, strong lady. I said, no, strong God. Okay? Strong God. I don't hear that. Strong Clear God. It all right? So I, the one scene I see is my mother, and not that this happened, but I just see her coming out of that coma. You know, they always have a musical, like, you know, I love Tyler Perry stuff and I how there's always a song after they tell the, you know, there's a scene that the song comes. And so I can see my mother, you know, um, have, have come out, we're praying for her and she looking like she's dead and like, oh, and then she comes out of it, right? And she sings a song. I don't know what that song is, but the whole place is a mess. People standing up, people shouting, people speaking in tongues, shouting because it is so real, you know, and I have to have actors who can really do that. But that's the one scene. That's all I got. Right? <laughs> but I see that scene of my mother because honestly, the six months she was in the hospital, you can say you believe all you. I'm still human. Mm -hmm. Right. I cried every night because, you know, the thought is. God, I'm not God. Maybe you don't, maybe she won't make it, Lord. You know, maybe it's not this time. Right. You know, you took my grandmother, you know, so it could be, you know, but I said, Lord, I'm just asking, you know, and then we have prayer warriors. I would put out the, uh, uh, emails and, and tell friends, you know, uh, I need you to pray. So everyone had their own they have prayer warriors and it just got that chain of people praying and Dr. Cindy Trim, the, 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 the evangelist, uh, I went to see her and got some blessed oil from her and I put it all over my mother's bed and all that, you know, it, it just, and I had nobody around her bed that was crying. I don't want nobody because crying is, is a form of disbelief. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I only had people who were strong. I say, if you cry, baby, cousins and all, look, uh-uh, say you butt home, baby. I love you. You can't come here. <laughs> Keep those tears. 
Oh yeah, I said, uh-uh, I gotta cut you off right there. Ooh, uh-uh, no ooh-ooh, go take your ooh-ooh home. Uh-uh, we ain't doing that. <laughs> when I tell you that's this one right here, keep them tears away, uh-uh, no negative vibes. No negative ooh. vibes. Oh. I tell you that all the time, uh-uh. Yeah. I love it. Some people, I see them coming and, I, you know, Everything is negative, negative, negative. Stop. Yes. I'm going in the opposite direction. Because like you said earlier, you could be just as happy and then someone yeah. can come and unload on you. And when they leave, you start feeling really bad and you don't Ooh. know why. Because they you just don't know. unloaded all of that negativity on you. On. Uh -uh. Someone just did the other day and I got, I, they, they sneaked it on me. They were real sneaky. And I know they were going through a lot, right? Four hours I was listening to this friend, you know, and God bless her. She's a sweet lady. Right. Uh, then another friend, it was three hours, you know, and my mother said, you got to stop doing that, baby, because I'll be all, you know, I'll be, <laughs> I'll be all sad. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. and so another friend told me, Ernie, they dumping on you. When you said that, I didn't look, they not Ernie, they dumping on you. And you, yeah, yep. you got a listening ear. But it's affecting you, man. It is. It will. And it, it would bother me. I'm crying and stuff, you know. And I, so I'm, now I got to I got to stop it. You yeah. have to. For your own, you know, sanity you. and, and state you. of mental well-being. Yes. Yes. Um, man. I yeah. want to ask you something, Ernest. Was uh, Ali, was he older or younger than you? He's older. He was. I think he's about maybe seven years older, like seven or eight years older. Not that much, but seven or eight years older. Yeah. And he at that time the Parkinson's wasn't in. This right. is eighty two. But he talked. When I think of, he did mention it. He mentioned him. Bundini got into an argument in the mansion. Right. And uh, Bundini said, Ali, you know, boxing, bless God, bless you with boxing, so you could be, you know, this, 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 this. Uh, tool of peace and, and love and, and, and for civil rights. And but he said, but boxing didn't do nothing for my brain, did it? And I didn't get it. You know, I didn't get what he was saying. Like, what does he mean? But, and I didn't, you know, but now then later on the Parkinson's, so it must have been something happening even then, but but the effects of it wasn't there yet. Right. You know? And he was very funny though. Funny, oh, that man would do everything. Yes. To make you laugh? Oh my God! He Funny told but me, kind. "Funny but kind. oh, so yeah. kind. the best, the kindest person." I tell, I've said this in church. I said Ali is the the best example of Christ that I know beyond mo I, I, most Christians. I'm sorry yeah. because he gave uh, two Christians. I remember that pastor coming in. They needed land for a Christian school. Ali gave them the land. He gave that guy the land. He's helped the Jewish people with the senior citizens. He's helped the towns. He don't, you know, he don't care. Jehovah Witnesses. And they be said, oh, they come there and ask him, oh, yeah, but you know, you're a heathen and all that. And Ali ain't doing nothing. To, he ain't saying nothing to them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he, oh, you, you, you hungry? They don't even get it. They call him a heathen. He's asking, are you hungry and what you need? Yeah. And he said to me, well, you see what I just did? I said, yeah, I can do that because I've been cussing somebody out. I would have cussed them out long. Uh, God got to work with me on that. I would have yeah. cussed them out. <laughs> but I Ali, so patient. He was. So yeah. I watched that PBS documentary on uh, Muhammad Ali well, recently, yeah. and I didn't even realize everything that he was doing because, you know, he didn't brag about it. But no. he, he did a lot. And those last few fights, those last few years, he was warned to stop boxing because yes. you know his kidneys were you know were affected. Yes. And, 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 you know he you know the head trauma. They they right. told him to stop. He would stop. not. He says you know he they, they had to build a mosque. This has to be done. That I know. To be. He gave his life. To he gave his people. life. And you know his say. You know what his favorite saying was: "Your rent here for staying on this earth." Is your service to other people? Oh yes, I love yes, I love that. He believed that. That's deep. Yes, I mean, he he believe. I have been at the, the mansion when they would say, uh, "Somebody come over." Oh, we need you for this charity. We need you for the cancer here. We need you for another charity. And he'd be sitting there, and when they leave, 
he go like, I'm so tired, you know, but I gotta do it. And I said, why are you guys? He said, I, I, again, your, your rent, you have to pay. He said, I've been blessed beyond measure. Yes. I gotta do it to the last breath. Whether I'm tired or not, that is so you know, cool. I gotta do it. Yes, yes. And yep. he definitely, with me, anything I wanted, anything I needed, you know, wow. uh, he gave me, yes. I, I did see a picture of you two when I was looking up some of your, your work. I did see a picture of you two together. Oh, uh, uh, it's still for me. I, I said, God, he knew, because certain things he was telling me, he knew that I would tell. He knew I'm going to give this testimony, you know. Right. Because he, he, uh, I witnessed him being so kind to mm -hmm. some white people who might have been a little racist, but they didn't, they loved him. Right. And he would say it to them in such a way with humor and just say, try to be better. Right. 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 I mean, that was one time I remember was at this hospital and uh, he said, let's go and visit the people with cancer uh, who are just terminally ill. He said, let's do it because God wants to do it. So mm -hmm. we go into the, then, if, uh, they they said, oh, all the doctors want to meet you. So could you come down? You know, and they had all the doctors. Uh, a lot of doctors came in this one room to just say hello to him. So there, there, they, and he says, um, he says, now think about this. All y'all, you got, you know, you got your, you, well, you went, you went to Harvard. Or someone said, oh, they went here. And you all your degrees, and he said, as much as you admire me. Now the most uh, famous face, you know, in the world. I mean, my name is all. I mean, the president can't go. President of the United States can't go to places I can go, right? He says, but in spite of that, all the millions I've made, the most recognized face in the world, isn't there just a little bit of you because you're white that thinks you're better than me? Yeah, you still wouldn't want to be me. And baby, I will never forget. They just was like, <laughs> and he said, it's okay. It's okay. And they just did like this. Yeah. I swear. It was a moment. And he said, that's all right. He said, yeah. that's all right. You know, I just wanted to, I just wanted to, that it's still there. So just be, you know, just be more loving, understand, you know, right. just try to get that out of you. And then when we leave there, he says, did you see what I just did? You, you just see what he didn't like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. He just gently, yeah, just gently, right? And just as he told the the church about, uh, he had me like, hey y'all, look at Raj. He gonna be, he's Jesus on the cross. All right. He said, now this is white people, right? He says, imagine y'all see this black Jesus all your life. All of the angels are black. When you feel a little inferior, the, everything is black, and you white, and they went, "Yeah." He said, "Now you understand what, what what black people feel because you have all these images of Christ and God and the angels as white. So I want you to do me a favor, take those images down." God said, "Worship in spirit and in truth." I'm not telling you to become a Muslim, stay Christian, right? But you're not helping us as a people. When you put up these huge portraits of Christ with the blonde hair and the blue eyes and all, and so this stuff, but he did it in such a gentle way and with humor. He got me like stretched out with the arms and, <laughs> and I'm on the cross. But they got it. He said, So when you tell your preachers, tell your ministers, tell your mother. To think about worship God in spirit and in truth. So stuff, he, he was just amazing. I, there's so many instances where he would use humor. A guy might say a thing that he don't even know is racist, a white person, right. and he would wait and he say something with humor, and the guy would like, oh, oh my God, you know. But he didn't beat up the guy. He just would come back with a joke about it, right, oh, yeah. and make him be, be embarrassed about it. He that was just was his way, yeah. Oh my Lord. Tell the truth, I mean, with a dagger, but it was love with a dagger. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That was Muhammad Ali. Yeah. The greatest ever to do the it. Greatest the greatest ever. Time. That's the greatest. Ernest time. Thomas, we have a question. Donna Joyner, what's your sign? What's your zodiac? 
Oh, I am the I am Aries, baby. Me too. <laughs> you too. March twenty eighth, <laughs> and you're the twenty sixth. What? You March twenty eighth? Yes, sir. I knew it. I said wow. that's wow, 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 baby. Aries, come on. The first time, come on. <laughs> I'm Aries. I'm Aries. What, what are you? Aquarius. Of course, my mother's Aquarius. Yeah, my mother's Aquarius. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm Aries to the bone. Yeah, I forgot to mention that to you. I read that and I'm like, oh my God, he's the 26th and I'm the 28th. Oh my God. Oh, that's incredible. That's incredible, baby. Yes, yes. Yeah, I am. Because I used to like, oh, such stuff. But then this lady showed me. She read this whole thing. I went, oh, that, I, I thought she was reading my biography, you know? <laughs> I said, oh, that, that's, that's me. Yeah. Yes. Well, wow. Today is so great to catch up with you, Ernest. Uh, Always. You are a kind individual. You're humble. Back at you. You didn't let, let the success get you, you know, all up there. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Fully against the arrogance and the cockiness of it all. Exactly. Oh, no. I am nothing but a, you know at the beginning, at the end of the day, a child of God. You know, and sure. that's why my 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 celebrity friends would get upset because I'd be going all out. You know, I'm talking to people at events. I'm signing autographs, and I remember, you know, I won't name names, but a few so that they was upset. Like Ernie, you don't owe them that, you know. And I went, yeah. but I don't. You do your thing. You know, right? I don't. Mind. I'm going to them. I'm hugging them. You know, I'm. I, they don't have to. Some are shy and they kind of look at you. I'll go over there. You know, I'll go to them and hug them. You know, and that's because I said to God, I will give Him the glory, not me the glory. Right. I will give Him the glory. You know. So I do that, and I I, I love it. I love uh, helping people, and I've always done that. Share whatever monies I have, and. And I thank God for this new success because, again, God knows. He gives me the ball, make me the quarterback. He knows people are going to be saved. Are gonna be, I'm going to help with their finances, the home, whatever I need to do, surgeries. Uh, I just It makes me happy. I love acting, but there's nothing that makes me happier than making somebody else happy. Well, you truly made us happy today by, you know, donating your your time, which we know is very valuable, to um, our uh, pod, our YouTube channels, the Finest Wine Cooking Channel, the Rolling Reviews uh, uh, um, YouTube channel, and our subscribers. Uh, we have some people in the in the uh, chat that are uh, uh, old enough to remember the uh, shows and the movies, and and when we told them that, you know, we were going to be interviewing oh. you they were like ah. <laughs> so yeah. they, they've been excited and they've been waiting and so we just oh. thank you for again being so humble um thank because you. it is kind of you know um for some people earth shattering when they meet their favorite you know uh, yes stars yes. and then they're, they're yes. like standoffish and they yes. Identify, yes you know you're famous because of these people who watched you, you made money because of these people. Now you Thank don't want to have anything to do with them, or you know, come Stay. on, that's not. Stay, right. mama. I, don't, I don't understand that, and I know as some people, I won't name names, right? But I went, how dare you? And Ali was straightening you out. Oh yeah, Ali has straightened a bunch of celebrities. Like, uh, uh, if you standing near me, don't you ever refuse an autograph? Oh yeah, don't you he ever refuse that. a photo? Oh, he tell me, oh, don't be with me. Oh, he didn't like that. He said, you can take all the fame and all. If I can't be with, especially his black boy, he said, if I right. can't be with my people, he would go like the, like the you know, PBS, uh, Khalilah was saying, he would take a suitcase full of money, yeah, whatever city, and go in the ghetto, go he in did. the neighborhoods and give money out, dishing it out, just giving it to people. He loved it. He loved all people, but he really loved. He says they were trying. Oh, Ali, you know, you shouldn't be associated with this, and you, y'all yeah, can keep all this. You can have this right ring. On. You can have that money. But I can't be with my black folks. Come on, you come can on. have it all. Come on, they keep tried it. to stop him. 
You know, Ali didn't listen. He did his own thing. Always. 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 As you always. always should. Do your own thing. As you, al as you always should. Yes. Exactly. Yes. yes. I'm definitely going to stay in contact with you, particularly when it's time for our birthday, because I got to send you some birthday uh, love. <laughs> oh, yes. Absolutely. Please do. We'll have to salt. We'll have to do like a little celebration online. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll toast each other online. On our channels. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. That's birthday, good. and thank you, Ernest, once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you stay blessed, brother. You too. Stay blessed. You yes. are all right. Uh, uh, Ernest, thank and uh, again, I, I have your email, so I'll keep continue reaching out to you to just say if it's just you just say have a blessed day. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll let you know about the movies as they come out too. You yes, know. Yeah, your books oh, and yeah. things. Uh, I know they're on Amazon, so I definitely want your autobiography. I don't have that yet, but I will okay. have it soon. Okay. Yep. Well, yeah. uh, you know what you do? You know, uh, email me. Okay. I'll, the, I'll give you both a copy. Okay. You don't have to worry about it. I, yeah, I'll sign you, give you an autographed copy. Thank and I, you. also, mm -hmm. I got, uh, I'll give you, uh, well, this, well, this is Mr. Omar. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. I also have a What's Happening. Come on. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Oh, shoot. Wow. What a blessing. What a blessing. Dropping them I nuggets. Know. Dropping them nuggets. That's right. Oh, man. I love it. I love it. So what I'll do, um, fine, if you'll email My old butt. I fell. Oh. I fell. Oh. You fell. I fell. I fell. <laughs> I fell. <laughs> I fell no, it was hard. I fell 72 years trying to get up. That's but this okay. uh, we, this is the what's anywhere. happening. Man, that's, man, I'm going to put that in the plaque. I'm going to put that so in the give. So I'm going to give, uh, just send me. The address, and I'll send you both, you know. Uh, okay. the, the, yes. Thank you. I can't so believe much. I fell. My old butt fell. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. You got back up. I got back <laughs> 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 Wait, oh, bro. My. Wait. You might got some competition. She do that laugh just as good as you now, Ernest. Uh, you know what? I'm checking you out, the Aries. For no reason. <laughs> Now, see, oh, I'm gonna man. email you both of our addresses, uh, Ernest, okay? And, okay, um, like I said, I'm gonna stay in contact with you to make sure. Oh, I, yeah, you know, do that. Oh, yeah, this hello. is not the end, this is the beginning. This yes, is just sir. the beginning. Yes, thank you, Ernest. Thank you. Have a good thank night. Thank you so much. Yeah. Our subscribers are, are elated, they're thanking you. Thank yeah. you oh, very much. I'm gonna thank email all you. of thank your subscribers. Thank you thank for you. blessing me up. Thank you both for blessing yeah. me up. Thank you. We love you, and God may well, God continue to bless you. Thank you. Right. You too, baby. You too. All right. All right. All right. All right.